Joining us now to break down the day's developments is Representative Steve Watkins, the congressman serving the 2nd District of Kansas. Congressman, we finally see some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to this uh, latest stimulus package, as we're going to call it, bringing relief to some of the small businesses across the country. Are you pleased with the end result? Well, our mission is to protect the lives and livelihoods of folks. And so it's actually not unlike my years in Iraq and Afghanistan. And just like that, I mean, there's some good and then there's some bad. I mean, we the good news is, is we did replenish the PPP program, payment protection uh, program, with $310 billion. That was uh, out of a package today of 484. And we also gave the real heroes of this war, the frontline medical professionals, 75 billion and we allocated $25 billion to testing. And so that, that's the good news. The bad news is this is coming way too late. You know, the, the White House identified it a need to replenish back on August 7th. Uh, Democrats blocked uh, some actions on the 9th, and it ran out of money on the 16th. And here we are today just now getting to it. So, you know, I, I'd like to have seen this gone quicker, but uh, a lot of good is happening today as well. And adding to that point as well, we've seen a lot of small businesses not be able to get those loans due to the delay when it comes to this bill. That's the whole reason why you uh, you and your colleagues are replenishing the funds in that program is in order to bring some relief to those small businesses. But it was delayed for a number of different reasons. Uh, some of your Democratic colleagues wanted to get other proposals in there as well. Uh, one that was mentioned today was more of an investigative type of committee to oversee the funds, but also the response to the White House as well during this pandemic. Do you think that this is the wrong time for politicization? or to add those type of issues to a bill such as this? Of course it is. It's a horrible time for politics. In fact, this committee what might sound good on the surface, but there are already eight committees overseeing th uh, this money, and this would be the ninth. And it's going to be every bit as uh, fair and impartial as Adam Schiff's secret skiff, especially <laughs> under the leadership of uh, Whip Jim Clyborne. And now think about this. Uh, Clyborne delivered South Carolina to Joe Biden, basically paving the way for his presidential nomination. Uh, Whip Clyborne also called the pandemic, quote, a tremendous opportunity to restructure things to fit our vision. Mm -hmm. So this, this is, it's, it's not what it sounds. It's, it's, it's partisan politics and it didn't, didn't belong uh, as part of the bill. Yeah, you and your colleagues. I saw uh, Jim Jordan, Representative Jim Jordan's speech before making those very same concerns. So I think that's a shared perspective among not only you, but your other colleagues on the uh, Republican side of the aisle as well. Uh, what comes after this? Because we know that, for example, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he wants to see how this plays out before we move to a fourth possible bill. Uh, this comes as a lot of states are considering reopening their economies. Do you think that we should wait to see how those states do before we maybe move ahead to another bill? Yeah, we do. We need to we need to see how this plays out, and when we when and if we do, uh, you know, provide another bill, we need to be have regular order and thoroughly debate with all members of Congress and have no Pelosi pet projects. And those decisions on how to and when to reopen ought to be driven by data, not dates. Now the president's provided clear guidance. Now that guidance can be taken up by the states and the counties, the cities and the towns adopted by them to apply. Uh, based off of their data, their infection rates, their death rates, their trend lines, and also their population vulnerabilities, as well as their medical capabilities, their medical professionals, PPE, ventilators, and such. And I want to build on that a little bit. You're on the uh, Committee of Education and Labor, and so you are very closely looking at many of these uh, facets as to when the economy can open, when businesses can open, when people can go back to school. What are those numbers that you're looking at when you're trying to make your determination? I know it's not your choice as a representative. It falls on the state governors. But what should they be looking at? Is it uh, the leveling of the curve, as we've been told so much about? Is it the amount of deaths? Is it the uh, jobless claims in each state? What, they should, what should they be looking at? Well, I think this is one of the reasons it's so important that we decentralize these choices down close to the communities that they affect, because each community is different. We we do need to they do need to look at rates like our infection rates and death rates. I've got uh, 25 counties. There are some that don't have uh, any cases and uh, they're sitting at home you know, wondering why they can't work and wondering why they're becoming even more broke. And so we're looking at uh, infection rates, death rates, as well as uh, the medical capabilities uh, in the community. So and all of that uh, converges together to make smart policy choices. And I want to talk about your home state as well. How is the state of Kansas dealing with this pandemic? I'm so proud of the people of Kansas. Now, uh, we we of uh, of the PPP, we've gotten 4.2 billion. I believe it's it's helped 26,000 
businesses. Uh, we're, we're doing very, very well. There are communities uh, that are uh, that are fighting well, but we are ready to go back to work. Um, you know, Kansans are hardworking and resilient folk. And uh, we're ready to work, but in a safe manner. And so, and also, we've got a lot of uh, geographical uh, and uh, diversity. We've got our cities of Topeka, Lawrence, and Leavenworth. And what's true there is very different from our southeast corners of the smaller communities. And so, it, their medical capabilities, as well as their infection and death rates, are different. And so, again, I like pushing uh, uh, these responsibilities down to the fantastic leaders that we've got uh, and that in those echelons of government. And that seems to be the approach that we're hearing on different levels of government. Even when it comes to governors, they want to do it by a more regional approach as well, uh, such as California, Oregon, and Washington, or on the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, Maryland. They want to do it from a regional approach. But even within those states as well, to what you're speaking about, they even want to go a little bit more closer to the community, make sure that's a local, municipal type of approach as well that fits the needs of the people in those local communities. So I think you're right on to say that. But Representative Steve Watkins, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks, Alice. Good to see you again.